We are here in Newark, New Jersey, downtown Newark, New Jersey, a vibrant city on the way back. Very pretty skyline, similar to New York. Not as many tall buildings, but just as pretty. Tonight, we have heavyweight boxing, top of the card inside the Presidential Center in Newark, New Jersey, known as The Rock. Heavyweight Championship, 12 rounds. Thomas Adamek from Poland, 43 and 1, 28 KOs. Kevin McBride from Clonus, Ireland, 35, 8 and 1, 29 KOs. The conqueror of Mike Tyson beat him in his last fight. We are waiting for the arrival of the participants. Right here in the Prudential Center, the tail of the tape. Adamek three years younger, McBride five inches taller, 70 pounds heavier with a five inch reach advantage, though when they stood next to each other in the weigh-in and the press conference during this week, the, the height was not that off. The rules here in the state of New Jersey, three knockdown rule is not in effect. There is no standing eight count. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round and only the referee can stop the fight. In case of an accidental foul, go to the scorecards. After four rounds before that, it is a no decision. The Prudential Center here in Newark is packed. And here comes the first fighter, Kevin McBride, known as the Colonus Colossus. From the same town as Hall of Famer Barry McGuigan, who was known as the Clonus Cyclone. McBride said when he beat Mike Tyson, he wanted to upset the world. Now he said, I just want to shock the world by beating Adam Wood. He's been using a hypnotist. Said he wants to use 100% of his brain, Jamil, when he's in the ring. Well, you know, at the very early part of my career, I also used a hypnotist. And it did wonders for my career. It really allowed me to focus so much more than I was able to before using that hyp hypnotist. There you see big. Kevin McBride, six foot six, 285 pounds, and he's fought at 280 many times. He beat Mike Tyson at 271. He's going to have to work very hard to get his guy out of there early because 285 pounds is a lot of weight for a big man to carry around. Listen, I'm walking around at 285 pounds now, and I'm retired, <laughs> and I and I don't even feel comfortable. I could not. I couldn't imagine fighting at 280 pounds. But one shot can change everything, so you never know. And you see McBride was walking around with the Irish flag. The crowd, the lights get dimmed here in the Prudential Center. Awaiting the hometown favorite, Thomas, Thomas Adamek, who has made this his home away from home. Lives in Jersey City, and every time he fights in the rock, place is packed with his fans. Something about boxing and putting butts in the seats, he puts butts yes, in the seats. Yes, he does. And as I said before, Tony, it, it seems to me as if 8,000 of the 13,000 people here <laughs> are of Polish descent. Kevin McBride was supposed to fight Mike Tyson when Tyson got out of prison, and that didn't work. Waited around. Waited around and finally got the opportunity and ended Mike Tyson's career. The crowd is watching a highlight package on Thomas, Thomas Adamek. That's where he fought Andrew Galata. Very, very personal young man. He, he's, I shouldn't say young, 34, but he's been a light heavyweight champion, been a cruiserweight champion, trying to become a heavyweight champion, and he's fought guys like Michael Grant and now Kevin McBride got big guys. Yes, you know, listen, he has a lot of what it takes to be a world champion in the heavyweight division in, in, in terms of desire and will. Let me ask you something real quick. McBride's just walking around the ring. You've been a challenger before, and sometimes the champion makes you wait. W what do you do? Do you just walk or do you pace? Do you, do you, do you shadow box a little bit? What do you do to, to stay loose? Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm staying focused on Execution, execution. That's all I care about. I don't, I don't know how long it's taking. I don't care how long it's taking for the other fighter to get to the ring. All I'm thinking about is execution. And when my fighter arrives, then he arrives, as Adamak is now. In the glasses is his trainer, Roger Bloodworth, does a very good job with Thomas. Come 
Tomas Adamek, 43 and 1. 28 KOs. Only loss on his record. Back in 07 against Bad Chad Dawson. Lost his WBC light heavyweight title. This crowd, folks, is just electric. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This guy is rocking the house with this jam here, his walking music. <laughs> a little bit of urban hip hop, a little bit of Polish lyrics. He's rocking the house. A little kibasa with uh, some barbecue sauce on it. I think you can feel the tension in this place because there is so much on the line for this fight. You have you have your shot at the heavyweight title. Some guys all of a sudden, ooh, I pulled a muscle. I can't take this fight. I'll go right to the championship fight. But he's he's got to step up. Absolutely. And again, you know, Tony, as I said earlier, let's leave that up to us fighters. We'll leave that up to the fans and the writers and the commentators like you and I. But all we care about right now is the moment. And a you, day at a time. You look at a fight at a time. You look at Adam McFace face and you say, he must be tight. No, he always looks like that. No, <laughs> I, you know, I guarantee he's very relaxed. You know, Roger Bloodwork was my trainer for, for when I fought Chris Bird at the at the garden, and I'm sure he's well, well prepared. Can't wait for this fight. Wanna see him get it on. Let's get started. Let's go up to the ring announcer, Joe Antonacci. Ladies and gentlemen, Main Events and Ziggy Promotions present live from Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey, our Main Event of the Evening. Our Main Event is sponsored by Adams European Contracting. Our main event, 12 rounds of action for the IBF International and NABO Heavyweight Championships of the World! Your IBF official at present at ringside, Vaughn Laprad. Representing the WBO, Mark Reels. Our judges for our main event, Lynn Carter, Robert Grasso, and Larry Hazard, Jr. And our main event referee, Randy Newman. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, the challenger who comes to us this evening from Clonus, Ireland, and Boston, Massachusetts. He weighed in at 285 pounds, green trunks, gold and white trim. Professional record of 35 victories, eight defeats, one draw and 29 wins by knockout. Please welcome the Clonus Colossus, Kevin McBride. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He comes to us this evening from Gilovica, Poland. He weighed in at 215 pounds, black trunks, orange trim, professional record, 43 victories. Only one defeat, 28 wins by knockout. He is the reigning and defending IBF International and NABO heavyweight champion, Tomas 
Our referee, Randy Newman, has our fighter's final instruction. Ladies and gentlemen, you're both familiar with the rules that have been thoroughly gone over. I want you to remember two things. Number one, obey my commands. Number two, protect yourselves at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the belt. There is a big man as the third man in the ring. That's Randy Newman, former heavyweight contender, so he can handle the big guys. Another famous name in the in the McBride's corner. Goody Petronelli's working in the corner. Former trainer of marvelous Marvin Hagler. McBride, 6'6, 285. Adam listed as 6'1, 215. Here we go, Bell. For round number one. Oh wow. Oh wow. But, you know, he's showing good hand power, but not uh, I would not fight with this big man early. I would not fight with this big man at all. I think Adam is gonna go for that belly. Looks a little soft. Come out on the outside. Billy's going to the body right off the bat. I want to see what happens with Tomas throws that overhand right. See no. what happens. I really don't believe that that a big pride is looking to fight a long fight tonight at 285 pounds and as slow as he is right now there's no way he wants to be in there too long he wants to get this fight over as soon as he can there was that overhand right and another one McBride's got to fight back Adam goes to the body and goes to the head What McBride should be trying to do is lean on Adam out of the 70 pound weight advantage. You know, McBride is hitting him with some big heavy shots, and it looks as if Adamak is feeling those shots. Yes, he's faster than him. Yes, he has a lot of speed. Yes, he has a heart of a champion, but I'm not really sure if he can handle a real heavyweight with real heavyweight speed, power. Well, McBride doesn't have the speed, but I think what, what Adam is trying to do is soften him up with the left hook to the belly, bring the right hand to the top. McBride's got to just keep throwing punches. Oh, he's hurting him. He's hurting him. He's hurting him. Mc, McBride is definitely hurting Adamak here. It looks like McBride, when he does hold him and he does hit him with a shot, it does look like he's affecting him somehow. I think he's... Nice body shot by Adamek. I think Adamek has this fight. I, I think he's got it under control, Jamil. I'm sure he does. But having said that, it does look like McBride, when he does land, he does hurt him a little bit. And how could he not? I mean, he's 285 pounds hitting a 215-pound man. McBride just kind of plodding along. No jab yet. Adamek's game plan. Flurry, get in, get out. Big body shot, try and turn the big man. Coming up on 10 seconds to go in round number one, schedule 12.
Here we go, round number two, scheduled 12 round for the IBF International Heavyweight Championship. Thomas Adamek in the black, Kevin McBride in the green. We're here in the Credential Center, Tony Page along with Jamil McCline. Right on the line for Adamek. Giving him a lot of angles, Jamil. Yeah, he's definitely giving him a lot of angles. And I like that and from a smaller man. I'd love to see him continue. He just give him angles, turn, keep turning his opponent. As he is here, just keep turning his opponent, turning his opponent. Make his opponent work for everything he's getting. Adam definitely has the speed advantage, the way he's shaking his hand. Keeps going to that body. Don't dig in the left hook. That's an ample body. That's what he sees. He's going for it. It's probably extremely slow. The hardest thing for Adam if he tries to turn him, he just doesn't move. You know, I would never, I would never come to a fight looking like that. You know, you have to take pride in what you do here. And it doesn't look like, you know, he doesn't look like uh, McBride took too much pride in turning down, you know, burger breakfast. Nice short inside right hand by Adamek. Adamek should be using his hand speed. He should keep using that left hook to the belly, trying to soften him up. He goes down to the body and tries to go back up to the head. Adamek has quick hand speed and foot speed, and he's showing it off right now. Yes, he looks like he's starting to fall into a, a rhythm of execution. It looks like he's follow, now following his game plan that he worked on for the last eight to 12 weeks. He's getting in, he's getting out, he's making the big man follow him, he's making the big man tur turn, he's making the big man use his legs. But I don't like when he's in there like that. He looks like he's he, under. Yeah, because he's hitting him hard, and I don't like when he does that. Sits in there and, and, and allows McBride to hit him with shots on the inside. McBride dropping his left hand. Adam is trying to open it up a little bit. Less than 30 seconds here in round number two. Adam is digging those shots to the body like he's hitting a heavy bag. Doesn't seem to be phasing McBride much. Let's count a right hand by McBride. Coming to the end of the round. Ah. That looked like more of a slip. Randy Newman didn't make anything look. Yes, that was definitely a slip. And he uh, it was after the bell and he hit him as he was going down to him in the gut and, and kind of pushed him over. He's so heavy-handed, Tony, that when he does touch him, he does move him. If he was able to snap that jab with a right hand behind him, he may be able to make this fight a little competitive. But it looks like he's just unable to get his shots off anyway. McBride is just, I, I just think. Work on that defense and work, baby. Come on, looking good, baby. Yeah. I just think McBride came in too heavy. Right at the end of the bell, right hand by McBride. And the bell was just about to sound. McBride stalking him. Well, you know what? That was a shot to the gut. It sure was. You know, that was a shot to the gut, and as I said, he is very heavy-handed, and if he could just use his jab, he might be able to make this fight a little more competitive with coming over the top with a right hand. He should be trying. With Adamek's last five fights, he's 5-0 and with two KOs. If Bright is 1-4, and four, been stopped three times. Adamek should be using that jab See if he can bust up McBride a little bit. He got him leaning forward. He's vulnerable for the uppercut now. Oh, see, there he goes. He's trying to trying to do some some fighting with more than one punch at a time. He's trying to throw some combinations. But as I said, he's just too heavy. Oh, oh, and he's holding oh, oh, on to him now. Oh, 
McBride's best chance to win this fight now is to turn it into a brawl. And it looks like he just tried to do that there by grabbing Adamak behind the head there, pulling him in. Adamak wants no part of that. Adamak wants no part of sitting in on the inside, nor should he, Tony. He should always look to turn his man as he is now. Oh, nice left hook. And just doing what he just did there. Throwing shots, getting out, getting around as he is there. McBride very awkward. Adamak trying to work the left hand from the outside. Adamak trying to open up. As McBride covers up. Good body shot by Adam. He's just digging to the body. He's going to get that shot all night. Adamak's doing a great job turning his man. He's turning his man. He's making his man use energy, expend energy that he doesn't want to expend by following him all the way around the ring. As you see, he's the one who's walking around, letting him follow him, and pot shot and shotting him as he's doing that. As long as he can keep McBride away from hitting him with a right hand or a left hook, right, he's, got, punch, get up. he's got a great chance of uh, pitching a shutout here tonight. Adam is digging that shot to the body. Trying to catch him to the head. He's starting to lean forward, so he's vulnerable for the uppercut. But he's just digging in as he's starting to bend him over with the, trying to chop him down like a big tree. And these are the kind of movements he's going to need, Tony, in up. fighting someone right, like right, right, a Vladimir right. Klitschko or Vitaly Klitschko, where he's walk, letting his man follow him around the ring and pot shotting him as he is, just as he did there with a three punch combination. Coming up to the end of round number three, nice left hook. But Thomas Adamant as we wait for the bell. You got a punch. You got a punch. And you got a punch. You got a punch when he punches him. When he's punching, you got to make the dance. It to be he was hurting him in that first round. And he was. He was holding Adamant. Underneath the arm and hitting him over the top with the right hand, which which was bothering Adamak a little bit, and I thought it was hurting him a little bit. And also at the end of that last round, you saw he hit him in the gut. You know, he knocked him down with that. But during the fight, Adamak is able to keep him away, uh, keep McBride away from landing big shots, or which is it? Or McBride is unable to land big shots. He's carrying too much weight. Here we go, round number four. Both fighters breathing a little heavy in their corners. Kevin McBride in the green, Thomas Adamek in the black. Adamek's game plan, body head, body head. McBride, McBride trying to come forward just to land something, just to slow right, down, no and he starts up. leaning on him. Sometimes McBride looks like he's not paying attention. He drops his hand so low. That was a great four-punch combination off of McBride's miss that Adamak just threw. As I said, three, two, three, fours, and fives, and that's what Adamak is doing. He's throwing more than one punch every combination. Adamak gets in, gets out, works the left jab. He's just too much. He's so much faster than McBride. The only problem with McBride, he may be as tall as a Klitschko, maybe as heavy, but not as fast. With no jab. Adamek working the body, jabs, hooks. Trying to get McBride to lean forward. He can catch him a little closer. Get some more power behind it. You see McBride has completely dropped the left hand. McBride is definitely starting to show a little frustration here. There's nothing he can do against the speed of Adamak and the movement of Adamak. So he's getting a little frustrated. There's not much he can do. He has no speed to counter what Adamak is doing in there. No foot movement, no hand-eye uh, hand coordination. 
and not to mention he's grossly overweight. Under a minute to go for round number four. I don't trying to open up. Oh, McBride looked look like he wobbled a little bit or is it just tired? No, he definitely got wobbled with that overhand right by Automat, without a doubt. I think and if any punch is going to take him out, it's going to be the overhand right. And I think come rounds five, six, and seven, McBride is going to be looking for a way out of there if he doesn't figure something out soon, which I don't think Automat will allow him to. Adamek still has the speed. Maybe that's the punch that the bride doesn't see. Right, right, right. Ten seconds to go before the bell. Round number four. Tony Page, Jamil McClain. Glad you're with us here at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. There you see uh, Kevin McBride. He's slow with the stool every round getting in there. He just uh, he slowly pops, plops down. So his face is starting to scarf a little bit from catching some of the uh, punches from Thomas Edmick. Edmick's very, very fast. Uses his foot speed, his hand speed. He has the advantage that way, trying to get McBride to maneuver to where he is. You know, and as I said, Tony, you know, it's important for him to have the big man to follow him around. And as you see, he's walking toward him now. Every angle he takes, McBride will turn and follow him. Adam Ack is fighting a very intelligent fight, fighting a very well thought out fight. As I said before the fight, execution. All you're thinking about at this point is execution, and he's executing his game plan. Here we go, round number five on the schedule, 12 rounder. In the heavyweight division, 12, 12 rounds for the IBS International Heavyweight title. Get out, get out, get out. Thomas Adamek in the black. Break. Kevin McBride in the green. Third man in the ring, Randy Newman, former heavyweight contender. Adamek just controlling the action from afar, working the jab, working the body, going back up to the head, trying to make the big man fall around. Nice right hand lead by Adamek. What he needs to do, be impressive, close the show. You know, the Klitschko's are watching. Big hey, payday down the road for no, no. Thomas Adamek, supposed to fight Vitaly Klitschko. September 10th in Poland, Adamek's <laughs> home country. But no, he's got to close the show, got to win it. If he closes the show here tonight and, and, and does what everyone expects him to do, and that is beating Kevin McBride tonight, I think he'll put up a really good fight against either Klitschko because he knows how to fight a big man. He knows that you can't sit in there and let a big man lean on you, put his weight on you, and hit you with those big overhand shots. He's turning his man constantly. He's in, he's out, and so in twos and threes and four punch combinations, getting out of and getting out of the way. Hey, if he knocks out McBride, they can put the tickets on sale tomorrow. That place is <laughs> put in a 70,000 seat soccer stadium. They didn't sell it out in no time. Yes, it will. The best way to describe uh, McBride's style is a plotter. And you see Adamek's style, stay outside, quick hands, quick footwork, get in, get out. He's starting to turn into a wrestling match, I thought, for a moment. McBride is, is wanting to put his weight on Adamek yep. when he comes in to tire him out, but I don't think it's going to work. I don't, Adamek is not going to get tired out. He's trained very well for this fight, so he knows what he's, he knows all the tricks that McBride may try and bring to wear him out. More jabs by Adamek, going to the head, to the body, and staying away from the big man. McBride hasn't really thrown a big punch, has landed up giving all four rounds so far to Adamek. McBride trying to throw a punch, Adamek's got to keep his hands up though. Beautiful right hand there. Nice left hook. Uh, 
That's the end of round number five. for round number six. Kevin McBride trying to wear down Adamick by leaning on him, trying to clinch, trying to wrestle, wrestle with him. Has a 70 pound weight advantage. Adamick's been using his hand speed and foot speed to get in, get out, work to the body, go back up to the head. takes what's ever open. Head shot, body shot, been digging some good shots to the body. And McBride just plods along after him. Yes, he does. He just, as you said, he just plods along after him, following him around the ring, allowing Adamak to pot shot him whenever he wants to. He really has no defense for what Adamak is bringing. And oh, nice left hook. Looks like he's, he's slapping now by McBride. Looked like Adam had caught, caught uh, got caught by the grab of an awkward left hook. Yes, he did. That was the first shot of the fight without the pride holding him that he actually landed. Crowd chanting Adam Mecca. I mean, McBride is just pulling him and pushing him all around. I mean, trying to wear him down, not, not with punches, but with his sure bolt. Right. Oh, nice shot by Adam. He was coming in. So take a. And again, there's McBride hitting him again while clinching. Yeah, I thought he might only, take a point. Which is the only time he's been able to hit him tonight at oh, all. Oh, nice right hand. I see he should throw some more because he just dropped his hand. I like to see him throw a three, four punch combination, step out and come right back in Ooh, again. The cameraman gets knocked down. Another three, four punch combination. Did they give the cameraman a standing eight? Oh. Adam Mick on the outside, where he should be. McBride trying to club him. I don't think Adamak's getting frustrated, but he's just like, what do I have to do to keep this guy off me? No, Adamak is definitely not frustrated. In fact, he's far from showing any frustration. He's totally executing his game plan. The frustration is definitely coming from McBride. There was there is very little he can do to get off. McBride coming forward, Adam Mc trying to get out of the way. All, all he's doing is muscling him, and down goes the cameraman. 
He, you know, he, he took a good shot. I, you know, that, that's they have a group, a good crew that works here in the Prudential Center. You know, they can get back up even when they get hit. Yeah, the cameraman definitely went down softly. Round number seven, scheduled 12 rounder. Tomas Automac in the black trunks. Kevin McBride plodding along in the green. Hands down. I mean, now you, that's when you got to let go. You got to let go of a shot. Well, yeah, you know, whenever you see your, your opponent in front of you with his hands down, that is the time to jump in really quick with a right hand, left hook, and see, and I bet you he won't do that again. Short right hand by Adam as McBride was coming in. Wrestled down to the canvas. If Adam is trying to just see if he can close the show, see if he land one good shot to drop the big man. There's a right hand right there. He's staggered him right there. He took his legs away. There's the shot. That's it. It looks like he may knock it. And then that would be an absolute tremendous feat if he were able to get this man off his feet. It's got to get back in there. Don't let his head clear. One point, that's it. One point. Taking One a point, point away with a change of momentum also of the fight. You know, I don't really like that the, that the ref got in there. And it, you, have to take, you have to know when to step in on, on guys. And Adamak had the advantage there. He almost had his, had his man wobbled. Had his man out of there, and, it, and the ref gave him an opportunity to catch his feet. Looks like a some scraping on the left side of the face. McBride can't don't think it's a cut. Oh, McBride has been McBride has been bleeding for a few rounds, very lightly, but definitely bleeding. Adam is feeling it now, center of the ring. Nice left hook. And as I said, he's executing his game plan. He's not getting out of his game plan. He, He's still letting his, walking his man, turning his man, making his man follow him. I think he could make McBride walk into a punch the way he's dropping his hands like that. You have to give McBride some, some credit here because he is definitely putting up a valiant effort. All right, all right, go punch. Although very ineffective, nevertheless valiant. 15 seconds to go here in round number seven. Good round for Adamek. Coming to the end of round number seven. Beautiful. That was a great three, four punch combination to end the round, to end that last round for Adamek. Together in this fight, Jamil. Nice one, two, three, in and out. As a I, nice shot to hurt him. As, he, as I said, you know, he's definitely throwing two and three and four punch combinations, executing his game plan all the way. Here we go, round number eight. Adam Mc picking up the pace. If he could knock out McBride, at least he knows you can drop a really big, big man. Because he's had to work at it. McBride's a big man plodding along, and he's trying to drop him down like a tree. McBride trying to come in behind his jab. He's throwing punches in bunches. And he's really letting his nice. hands follow him around. Nice jab. Three jabs in a row by Adamek. Back to the belly. It's making this fight very easy for him. Very, very easy for him. Hey, get out of there. Get out of there. Hey, hey.
Brian's just smiling as we go along, and Adam is in the office doing business. We're in now round number eight. Let's get the 12 rounder. Crowd standing Polska for Poland. Just trying to establish something, just trying to get a one-two, but McBride's kind of smuggling his punches right now. Nice right hand by Adamick. Almost took out another cameraman. Yes, he did. He's definitely trying to be aggressive. He is definitely trying to be aggressive. There is no doubt about that. It's just at this point very apparent that it's totally ineffective. Right, not even throwing any punches, just standing there. It looks like he's trying to survive. All right, go punch, get up. Adam McWilliams going to the body. Nice headshot right there. One, two. See if he goes back to the belly and then back up top. Trying to chop down McBride. Trying to chop the tree. And it looks like he's, it looks like he may be able to get him out of there. Looks like his legs were buckling just a little bit. That will be a very loud, thunderous sound when McBride hits the canvas. Five seconds ago here, waiting for the bell, the end of round number eight. doing his thing in the center of the ring, controlling the action, combinations, punches, just trying to chop down the guy. It's not happening yet. The same game plan for Thomas Adam since round one. Stay outside, work the jab to the head, try to go to the body. Make the big man miss. McBride's game plan well, just kind of wrestle him and try and sap his strength by smothering him, but not throwing a lot of punches in the process. Adamak is starting to cause some swelling to McBride's face. Standing out that mecca again. They want to see him finish the show. He staggered McBride once. He's just too fast for McBride. And Adam Mick won't let it turn into a brawl. McBride just looks so awkward now. I guess it's Fatigue setting in. He's still got a ways to go in this fight. Yes, fatigue is definitely setting in, but it also appears as if Adamak is enjoying it. He's getting the rounds that he needs against a big man in order to get in there and compete well against a Klitschko. Well, McBride's no Klitschko, I'll tell you that. No, he's not, but he's definitely getting an idea of what it feels like to be hit by a big man. 
and I'm sure you understand it's a whole different ball game because to date I'm sure this is the biggest guy he's fought in the heavyweight division. Take it in stages. He fought a big guy, now he's gonna fight a big guy. After he beats him, if he gets if he finishes these next three rounds, after he beats McBride, he'll fight a guy with not only power, but also with speed. So he's taking steps, that's for sure. We wonder what do you get out of a fight like this other than rounds. <laughs> Less than 30 seconds here to go in round number nine. As I said, you know, you learn something from every fight. And I think what Adamak is getting out of this fight here tonight is that he is truly in the, in the heavyweight division. Coming to the end of round number nine. Another good round for Thomas Adamak. Start for round number 10. Let's get the 12 rounder. We're here at the Prudential Center in Newark. Known as The Rock. This place has been rocking every time Tomas Adamek lands a couple of punches. Working that jab again against Kevin McBride. Adamek worked very hard on changing his style from the European style to the American style, which involves a lot more movement, a lot more uh, uh, foot movement, hand movement, and upper body movement. And it's definitely showing here tonight how he's slipping the jabs of, uh, of, of uh, McBride and coming back with his own shots, as he just did there. The only problem is McBride is so slow. I mean, he doesn't have a jab like, like the, the Klitschko's do. And the Klitschko's come to fight, they don't come to plod. Right. I don't even, I don't think he I, <laughs> I think I'd give I would have been able to give Adamak a few more problems than uh, McBride think, did tonight. I think you would. But Adamak's fighting a, a smart fight. He's not turning it, he's not falling for it to turn into a brawl. He's not getting out of his game plan. Get in, get out. That's a shot to the back of the head by McBride. That must, you know, that must, that must hurt worse than a punch and all that weight just falling on you as you're leaning against the ropes. And Adam is trying to open up. Maybe gets his, his ire up and he just tries to get him out of there once and for all. Well, what a tough guy Adam is. You know, the uh, pride is just mauling him all over the place. And he's just like, whoa. You know, it, it's just, uh, it just shows that he has a heart of a champion. Working the jab, still on his feet. You know he's in good shape. Didn't take it lightly, even though he's got a bigger fight down the road. Nice right hand. Not, he should do it more often because McBride is not going to counter him. What he's trying to do is he's trying to split Kevin McBride's guard there as he just did with that last hard right left hook. He's trying, to, he's trying to get his hands down by going to the body and then coming right back upstairs. Right, go punch, go punch. 
Less than 10 seconds to go here in round number 10 of a scheduled 12 rounder in the heavyweight division. Petronelli, legendary Chuck trainer, along with his brother Pat, and his Marvin Hagler. Oh, seconds out. Here we go, round number 11. We have it a shutout for Adamek, 192. Referee Randy Newman took a point away in the seventh round for Holden from McBride. Crowd chanting Adamick again. They want to see him close the show with a late round stoppage. McBride plotting forward. Adamick trying to get it going. Adam McBride is really putting forth a great effort with with what he can. Well, it ain't with much. What he has. Yes, it is not much, but he is definitely putting forth a great effort with what he has. I can see he's in his face. I can see he re really trying. He does not want to embarrass himself. He does not want to get knocked out. He does not want to put on a bad performance, so he's definitely doing whatever he can do. I can see it in his eyes. Adamick looking for the opening, still trying to pot shot in there. I know if he does drop McBride, the place is going to go nuts. McBride running after uh, Adamick. Adamick running after, running away from McBride. Been digging that shot to the body. Nothing's really happened. Hasn't really worn him down, but he has. Adamick has landed a few headshots that has staggered McBride a couple times tonight. No, it definitely looks as if he has, if he has followed his plan from the nice. opening bell to now. Nice right hand. And that game plan is to walk his, let his man follow him around the ring, potch out him when he can with two, three, four, and five punch combinations, and it's worked all night long. McBride is extremely frustrated, just, just cannot find a way to get his hands on out of Matt. Taking a lot of shots from Adamick. The one good thing about Adamick, you know he's in shape. He's had to move, he's had, he's the one doing all the movement. McBride is slowly walking after him no, with no pressure. You just know he's coming. I wonder if there's one more good right hand in Adam left. He can stagger McBride again. Oh, there's more than one good right hand left. Adam Act is far from exhausted. He's far from tired. He's just going through the motions at this point. He just, he's just pretty much on autopilot. Everything he has worked on for the last eight to 12 weeks is working. So he's just on autopilot and doing what he has to do. So if, if, if a right hand presents itself, it will land. Come to the end. Yeah. 
the next day, the center of the ring all night. Did his duty, did his job, did his work. In and out. In and out all night. Three, four, and five punch combinations all night long. Last round. Both fighters gonna see if they can let it all hang out. Adam X trying to get that one last big shot and see if he can close the show. Way out in front, I got in a shutout. Now with the, oh, step on his foot. Oh, step on his foot. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure he's, I'm sure McBride didn't mean to step on his foot there. He's just very tired, exhausted. And here's, here's Adamek taking chances that he doesn't have to take. He's way out in front. I know you would like a knockout. I know it would look good on the record. I know it would look good going into a Klitschko fight. But W12 was a lot better than KO12. Oh, yes, it is. But you know, there's really not much McBride can do. I don't think McBride has any power left or any kind of strength. And no foot movement, no coordination. He's full of frustration. This fight, for all intent and purposes, was over several rounds ago. I think it was over after a couple. And that makes having fun. As long as he doesn't get caught. I wonder if the promoters are reaching for their heart pills right now. It's funny is how McBride stepped on uh, stepped on the uh, he's stepped starting on to feel good. He's throwing some bolos in there. Starting to feel good and he knows that the end is here. He knows that his multi-million dollar payday is right around the corner with one of the clitch goes. He's very happy right now. Less than a minute to go. I'm sure Meldrick Taylor was happy in the last round against Julio Cesar Chavez. Gotta be careful. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Less than 35 seconds ago. Well, at least Adamek is showing some heart. Gambling, which I don't think his promoters want to see it, but he's you No, know, as trying. I said earlier, I think both fighters are showing a lot of heart, even though McBride had, had no, no answer for anything that that Adamak did tonight. Less than showed a lot of heart. Five to go. Adamak has this one in the bag. Congratulations <laughs> to the apparent winner, Adamak. Congratulations to main event. Congratulations to Kathy Duver. They've done a great job. Their next fight is to go on and defeat one of the Klitschko's. And as Adamak said, it doesn't matter which one. There you have Thomas Adamek waiting for the decision. Not at 120-110 for uh, Adamek. McBride just d didn't have the skill set. There's uh, McBride. Adamek used his footwork. He used his speed, his hand speed, his smarts. Well, maybe that last last round he didn't use so much smarts because I think everybody wanted to stay away from him. But he he's a fighter. And yeah, he, he wanted is. to make a statement. Yeah, he definitely wanted to make a statement. And that's what fighters do. We take chances. This is, this is the name of the business. And you got to give a hand to McBride, although he could not, do, I mean, he, there was nothing he could do tonight to, to, do, to, to stop Adamak's attack. Adamak was under control. I guess he could. I guess he he earned the right to, to showboat a little bit because he, he he put and, in the work. And you know, Tony, uh, you know it's funny you say that because he did showboat just a little bit. Yeah, just a, not just too a little bit. Very disciplined fighter, very very focused fighter. I wish him nothing but the best. He's got a great team in Roger Bloodworth and Ziggy, people I've known for many many years in my career. He's got a great promoter and main event and Kathy Duver. Waiting for the uh, 
And Joe Antonacci, the ring announcer, to give us the scores. No doubt on who won. Just curious how many judges had in a shutout. Oh, they love their Tomas Adamek. Yes, they do, and rightfully so. Yep. Hello. Boxing fans, before we go to the scorecards, how about a round of applause for these two warriors? 12 rounds of nonstop action. And after 12 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Robert Grasso scores about 120 to 107, while judges Lynn Carter and Larry Hazard Jr. Both scored about 119 to 108, all for your winner by unanimous decision. And still, IBF International and NABO Heavyweight Champion from Ilovica, Poland, Tomas Gore. Thomas Adamak has improved to 44, 44 wins, has taken the NABO heavyweight title, did a great job here tonight, totally executed as he said he would do in the fighters' meetings, said he was just going to have his man follow him around, and he did that. Congratulations to him. Congratulations to Kathy Dover. As I said before, this is a tremendous victory for the whole camp involved because the next fight is on to fight one of the Klitschko's. Which it, these guys are showing great sportsmanship here. McBride holds up Adamak's hand, and Adamak holds up Ad uh, McBride's hand. Great sportsmanship, very good fight. There with the champion, Tomas Adamak. How'd you do in there? How'd you, how do you think you did? I don't know, I feel good. Uh, I had good 12 rounds. Opponent uh, hold, um, keep hold, hands, and it was difficult to hit him. But you know, a couple of rounds uh, was maybe a little bit uh, not too fast for, for fans. But I control 12 rounds uh, fight. I need uh, 12 rounds before a title fight. Is that the hardest you ever had to fight with a man that big? Mm -hmm. No, no, it was. Uh, Regular fight. Uh, I'm not tired. No, I'm not hit me any, any any time. But he leaned all over you. Did that hurt? No, no. Uh, and I'm I'm tough. You know, I'm hard shin. Was good 12 rounds for me. Um, very good uh, 12 rounds before title fights. Now, now we can talk about that fight. You got one of the Klitschko fights coming up, Vitaly Klitschko in Poland in September. What's that going to mean to be fighting in Poland? You know, it's for me, it's great. You know, it's my country. Uh, many people from here coming to Poland too. We are almost same. We live here and me too, but we love our country. What, what do you tell everybody? We, we've been watching the Klitschko's fight for so long as the champion. Is it time for a new champion in the heavyweight division? I am uh, said to peep to my fans, I will uh, heavyweight champion. This is my dream. I'm training very hard. We have a couple months to training. This is for me big chance to be third category champion. I never had to lose. I, you know, for me it's very uh, great, great chance to be champion heavyweight. What do you say to all the fans who came out to see you tonight? Thank you, everybody, which coming, which watch on Per Per View. See you again, we heavyweight champion. Thanks very much. We go down the ringside. You know. There comes a time in a, in a fighter's career when he, he knows he's reached the pinnacle. And I think tonight is that time for Adamak. Although he has not won the heavyweight championship, he has definitely put himself in a great position to go on and do wonderful things in the heavyweight division. 
It's, it's good to see that he, he he wasn't hurt. He never got you know never got hurt at all. Never got buzzed. But that's his his defense where he could go in, go out. Wouldn't let the big man as slow as he was. Wouldn't let him land a shot to maybe change the fight. No, he did not. He didn't let it put his hands on him at all. So there you have it. Thomas Adamek does what he has to do. Wins a 12-round decision over Kevin McBride. He goes on to fight for the heavyweight championship later in the year in September. I can't wait to see it to see how Thomas Adamek, who's moved up from light heavyweight to cruiserweight, now fighting as a heavyweight, sees if he can capture the heavyweight championship. This is Tony Page at ringside along with Jamil McC